Yeah, 940 here, big, uh, 840 here, Big 550 KTRS. One of our favorites, David Stokes from the Show Me Institute, policy analyst. Good morning, David Stokes. Good morning, McGraw. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, David. One of the nice things about uh, this segment that I like is you bring up uh, issues that uh, a lot of people aren't getting. Uh, you, you, shed, you shed light on stories that aren't getting enough attention, I should say. And this is uh, exactly what you want to talk about today. What's going on in Maryland Heights? Well, in the Maryland Heights Overland area, you've got a, a drug rehab center that's purchased a old state psychiatric facility. And that's very important because it's it's consistent with the use of the land okay. here. <laughs> so they purchased a former, now closed, state psychiatric facility. They're trying to open a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center there. And it's affiliated with Daryl Strawberry, although he he doesn't run it. He's just... He's got some of his ministry has an affiliation right. with this group, which operates uh, other centers around the country. I think they have one in Florida. And, and I there's think a one, lot in, one of, in Texas, too. I think they have one in Texas. Okay. Yeah. And it's running into a lot of neighborhood opposition. It's a traditional NIMBY, not in my backyard uh, type fight. And unfortunately, it's we're seeing this has existed for a long time, NIMBY, but we've seen a lot of it in the St. Louis area in the past year. We've seen, we can all agree we need more housing for low-income seniors. Oh, you want to put that in my neighborhood in South County? Oh, right. I'm sorry, that has to be stopped. <laughs> we can all agree we need more facilities for at-risk youths and, and, and housing to help them. Oh, you want to put that in my neighborhood in Brentwood? Oh, that right. has to be stopped. It wasn't just in Brentwood. It was they were going to commandeer a burned-out building in Brentwood, and they would rather pref- they, they preferred and voted to keep the burned-out building than to have two new buildings built. And I think that says a lot about, yeah, in defense of Brentwood, there were a lot of, I think, of Brentwood residents who in the end were misinformed, apo- mis- upset, very upset about the city's decision there. Absolutely. But right. ultimately, the city but council it, voted against giving them the right. zoning rights. They used zoning as a weapon, just as people in South County are, are trying to, to have done against that senior home on Telegraph, right. which, again, isn't in the neighborhood there. It's on a major road on <laughs> Telegraph. But now you have the latest incident of this, which is which is this drug rehab center in the Maryland Heights Overland area, sort of right there. And I think it's very unfortunate. I think we need facilities like this. I think in these debates we always lose the property owner rights. I mean, this was a psychiatric facility. Somebody's purchasing the land, wanting to use it for a similar use. They've got rights as property owners. Our community needs these facilities, and I hope that this, I hope that this proposal goes through. I think it will benefit our community. Where is it now in the process? Well, they're not using zoning, as I understand it, to fight it because because they don't have much of a leg to stand on there. Right. Because it used to be a similar facility just owned by the state. <laughs> right. So you can't really say to <laughs> right. the zoning doesn't work. It's, it's like there, there was a restaurant on it before, and now there's a restaurant on it now, and they no! want to zone. Right, right, right. Okay. All right. So zoning's not going to work. So they're using licensing. To stop it. They're trying to prevent the state from licensing the facility. And I believe the hearing is in. I don't have the exact date of the hearing. It's still a few weeks away. Right. The, the primary hearing, which won't be by any means the final, the final end of it. But they're trying to convince the state to say this is not a proper use in a residential area, which, and it is mostly a residential area. It's also a residential area that previously had a state psychiatric facility right in that same spot. What's interesting about all of these cases is that um, the misinformation spreads so much faster than the actual factual information. In other words, um, boys hope, girls hope, you know what, those troublemakers are going to come in and steal all of our TVs and uh, break into our cars. Yeah, I don't want that either. Right, But that's not even remotely correct. But yet that will continue to be spread, but the real message of Boys Hope, Girls Hope gets lost in all of that. It does, and the real message of the, the senior home on Telegraph, people com- concerned about traffic and parking as if all these seniors are going to be just driving <laughs> around constantly. <laughs> and the, the message does. And in Brentwood it was interesting because over time the real message got out, and we saw some people come out and say, I've changed my mind. I, right. I, like to take my signature off of that petition. Unfortunately, not enough people, and because the city council didn't overturn their, they've still blocked it. Right. Which I think was a, a bad call. Absolutely. In some ways, that's the worst of it all because that was a very small facility, hire, housing some sort of at-risk youth. Right. Who or don't? It's not about kids with criminal backgrounds. It's kids who don't 
have families who needed a great organization like Boys Hope, right. Girls Hope. Who, who were tested to be uh, uh, high-functioning, uh, brilliant, genius, smart, uh, underprivileged kids who needed a, a place to grow. So it was, you know, they did all their chores and they ate together, and it was it was a type of charity you want in, in your community. You do, and, and you I know you have some familiarity with them, and I was aware of that organization because when I went to St. Louis University High School, there was a Boys Hope was right by our high school. Okay. And there was a couple kids in that facility who went to our high school, and they were – it was like anybody else. There right. was, it was like the idea that you would object to Boys Hope Girls Hope <laughs> in your neighborhood is is strange. And it's the Girls Hope in Kirkwood worked for well has worked well for a long time, but now you have that again in in the Overland Maryland Heights area. And I keep saying both because one new media report I read out says it's in Overland, one says it's in Maryland Heights, so right. I assume it's right on the border. Yeah. But but to be out there opposing what is a consistent use for that land and has been historically been the use for that land is pretty much pure NIMBY, pretty much pure. Yeah, but and I don't think there's anything wrong with a rehab center in, in a neighborhood. It also goes to, uh, you know, they're taking away our freedoms. Our government needs to stop telling us what to do, you know, and then, oh, wait a minute, we, I don't want you doing that. So, you know, people talk the talk. But a lot of people don't walk the walk. Absolutely. And that's what's so so frustrating when you look about at NIMBY issues from the big picture. Is that here's a, a private organization trying to address a social problem. And the idea that it's they're going to be bringing dangerous criminals into a residential neighborhood, I think, is, is wildly overstated here. And it's just an inappropriate use of licensing. That's where sort of my why do I care as a policy analyst at Chumi Institute? What does this have to do with my job? I care because the other ones were zoning, and this is licensing. It's an improper use of government rules sort of as a weapon or as a tool of, of political activism to say, well, this has to be stopped. So even though the licensing requirements for this facility weren't about not in my backyard, we're going to use it as such because, right. because we have to stop it. And you, the use of zoning to block senior homes or Boys Hope, Girls Hope <laughs> is similarly inappropriate. And when you give government that much power— to, to just arbitrarily decide they're going to, to stop certain things because they might be politically unpopular in a neighborhood, I find that very troubling. There were some interesting stories along the way. There was that story about Hooters coming up to Florissant, and these people were all up in arms. How dare this Hooters show up? And there's been a couple of, like, lingerie shops that have taken these zoning people to court. And it turns out that, you know, Florissant to fight it and some of these other zones, it costs these communities – a lot of money to go fight this, and ultimately they lose because these businesses have a right to open up. And that's very important to, to remind people. And there's a case in outstate Missouri right now, and I won't go into the details, where people are trying to convince the county to stop something, even though the county has absolutely no leg to stand on to stop, to stop it. Right. And if they do, they will lose in court because the person trying to do this particular thing has plenty of resources to fight it in court. And... So I think you try and convince your city or your county to stop it in the hopes that the the drug rehab center will just go away and say, well, it's not worth the fight, even though if it goes to court, they'll almost certainly, I shouldn't say almost certainly, they would have a very good chance right. of winning because the use is so consistent with what it's been for in previous times. It's also interesting because here you have something that was a state-run facility. Now it's a private business, which is right, which is what you want. You want private businesses doing things that the state was at one point doing. So here's private business filling a hole instead of having government do it. And now they're getting beat up for it because they're having all sorts of issues with it because I don't want that in my backyard. It makes no sense whatsoever. Well, I agree. It's, I'm, I don't want to sound unsympathetic to the people who live right there and, and have concerns. Yeah, and, and, but, and that's, that's what I was thinking. I mean, if you live there... It's a lot different than if it, you know, it was right next door to you or either any of us. I think you may think a little differently about it, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Well, it isn't like they're now putting it into a new place that that it wasn't before. And maybe they didn't want it there, you know, when when the other when the other place was there. I'm just thinking, you know, in 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 their minds, if if I was actually in that position, how would I really feel? about it 
Where and should they open up a rehab facility? Well, and that's why I'm saying I don't know. Right. But I do feel sympathetic toward them to a certain extent. I can understand. I think they should open up with Boys Hope, Girls Hope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want Here Boys you go, Hope, Girls Hope? <laughs> How about this drug rehab facility there, Brown? What, you, don't want the, you don't want the Boys Hope, Girls Hope? Here, take take these kids. You don't, you don't want the honor kids going? Uh, a life change and you know a drug re- rehab. That's right. Two different things. Well, Arca, one of their offices is in Chesterfield Valley, so I mean, you know, it's in now it's in the, one of those office buildings. But you know, it's an office building where you go and get your your teeth cleaned on one side, and you go and you see these heroin addicts going to get help on the other side. You know, you, <laughs> so society's got to realize this drug and alcohol problems not going away, and you cannot run. You, there's nowhere to run. It's gonna find you. That. All right, David Stokes, when can we read you? When can we see you? You can read a, a lot of about land use policies and these types of disputes at showmeinstitute.org, and you can follow me on Twitter at David C. Stokes. And again, just the use of zoning and licensing to, to fight this fight, I think, is a, an improper use of those powers. That's David Stokes. He's with us every Monday, Monday, 850, Big 550, 